Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk you through an experimental diagram that I have come up with, which looks at the movement of money through a Vedic astrology chart. And this actually works for any astrology chart really, for tropical or Vedic, it doesn't really matter. All I'm doing in this diagram, which I will put up on the screen in full for you now, all I'm doing in this diagram is I'm just mapping how money moves through a chart in an impersonal sort of way. Or can we classify, maybe I should say it this way, can we classify all the different types of money and the different types of money movements can we just categorize them? Can we just attribute them to a particular house? Can we see where they fall? One day I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to sit down and map out money. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you firstly where the inspiration to do this came from. It came from one of Ernst Wilhelm's books, uh, which I have read. I'm a big student of Ernst Wilhelm. I love his work. and. He, in one of his books, he talks about the fact that you can use the framework of the Vedic astrology health system and map just about anything. You can map the movement of electricity through a computer if you want to. And I really like this concept of using this tool, this framework, this frameworking tool, using it to map inanimate objects or the movement of money or something like that. Can we do it? Yeah, we can definitely. And for me, I'll tell you where the inspiration for this video comes from and why this diagram came about. So basically, I think it was um, a week or two ago, I had a bit of a, a little bit of a cold flu like thing, you know, that old thing that we used to get a long time ago. Well, I had one of those and um, I was in bed and I wanted to watch some light entertainment on YouTube, some fun TV show. And I used to love watching Dragon's Den. For me, that is a favorite show of mine. I love watching these investors come and pitch their business ideas to these venture capitalists, right? These people who've done really well in life and they want to help young businesses grow. And as I was watching this, and I was watching this around the time of when I made the episode that I titled Seed Freedom. So I think that was, was that March 2019? I've even forgotten, but I, there was one episode where I talked about seed freedom and I was looking at farmers and I was looking at the second house because of course we've got that Rahu Ketu axis two and eight right now, right? So I was looking at Rahu in the second house. I was talking about seed freedom. And then I'm watching, like a few days after making that episode, I'm watching Dragon's Den and I realize, oh, this is seed capital. How interesting. So we've got farmers with seeds up in the second house. And I realize we've got the eighth house of other people's money. And of course, when I was putting together the Osho script, for those of you who watched that, there I talked quite a little bit about other people's money, right? And I realized that, wow, we've got seed capital here in the eighth house. And I started thinking, well, what other kinds of money do we have in this eighth house? And what I'm going to do is before I bring up, I'm going to bring up a, a zoomed in version of the eighth house so that we can talk through it. But let's just go back to Dragon's Den just very, very quickly, because there's one point I forgot to mention that the success of the show, why was the show so successful? And I do believe that the show is very much in tune with nature because it's like a physical manifestation of the eighth house. And the eighth house is where seed capital lives, where venture capitalists live. It's other people's money. It is the house of other people's money. And what else is the eighth house? When you think of the eighth house, you don't think of a bright, cheerful place you think of something like a dragon's den. So visually, the TV show absolutely got it right. When the TV show started, I think they were in a warehouse, but 
it was kind of golden and light in color. And I'll put pictures as I'm talking about this so you can see what I mean. And as they kept doing the show, they thought, no, let's make it really dark. Let's make it a really dark, dingy warehouse. And they changed the lighting and they made it this really dark, dangerous looking place. And they called these people dragons. All of this is so perfect because it all matches the eighth house so brilliantly. And I think in America, there's a show that's really similar that's called Shark Tank. And that's quite interesting as a concept. Shark is kind of, it's kind of more of a 10th house thing. I know in Vedic astrology, we've got crocodiles living in that 10th house. So that, that kind of works there. But I think Dragon's Den has been so successful in large part because amazingly, it's in tune with nature, like the visual look of the show and I have written a note here to say that this is a tip for your business if you're starting a business why not make it in tune with astrology or why not take um, inspiration from astrology from the symbology from the colors the lighting everything it's all there in the chart and you can borrow uh, you know the sort of visual cues that a chart gives in the building of your business. And that could make your business very in tune with nature and very successful, right? Just as a concept, just as a thing to do. So if you are starting a business or you are rebranding a business or you work in marketing or advertising or any of that, see if you can use inspiration from the chart. You, you probably find yourself just naturally manifesting aspects of the chart anyway. I didn't realize this. I think I was kind of doing that. My um, previous set before I am using this one now, this is light and bright and nice. It's a bit different. But when I was doing this in England, I think I'm sat there in a lot of videos, just there's a light, there's a lamp on me, and then I'm in the darkness. And that's very eighth house, and that's very occult, and that's very appropriate. And I had a lot of comments come uh, in regards to that set. People really wrote comments and said, oh, I really like your set. I really like the way you've got it set up. And yeah, it did work with astrology really well. At the moment, this is it's not too bad. And I do shoot these at nighttime. I found that shooting them at nighttime is better. And one of my friends who's an art director in advertising, hello if you're watching, I don't know if you're watching, but she said she thought it was very good of me to shoot these at nighttime with the night energy because I think she had seen some of me doing them in the, in the daytime. She's like, no, that's not as good. Do it at nighttime. So all these things count, I guess. But anyway, let's take a look at the eighth house of money. What have I written down here? So I started thinking, yeah, this is the place of seed capital, venture capital. I wrote down inheritance, divorce. Um, you know, when that, as an event happens, it, it can trigger, um, it, it can trigger a movement of money, right? And these events can be triggered by the movement of planets through the house, okay? We've also got trusts where you are assigned to hold money on behalf of someone else. So again, it's another thing of other people's money. We've got private banking here as well. Remember some episodes ago I mentioned that uh, the royal royalty or royal people are very at home with the occult. So they've also got this um, lovely thing of private banking here, which I'm sure there's some uh, royal connection there as well. So keeping the money private is, is something. Money laundering. So I wrote that down as an eighth house kind of activity. Yeah, so when you transform money, you change money. So maybe you obtain the money through a crime and then you buy an expensive artwork and then you sell the money so you've changed you've cleaned dirty money or something like that is that how that works i don't watch enough films i don't really know so but uh yeah there's that kind of activity here there's dark pool liquidity i wrote down here now how did i know about dark pools i know nothing about money and share market and all these kind of things but because i had read flash boys by michael lewis uh, I learned about all these things like dark pools and, you know, all, all these fancy financial instruments and, and things that I don't know too much about. But because I'm a fan of Michael Lewis, I read about some of these things. 
So you can see here that the eighth house um, contains lots of types of money. I've got a note here when Saturn moves through this house, a lot of people will transition careers. Absolutely. This is a classic transit. When Saturn moves through this house, a lot of people transition, for example, from a corporate career to becoming a light worker or, or doing something that they're really passionate about. That happens quite a lot. And I've consulted many of you and I've noticed that you're going through that transit and I can see, yes, that you're changing career and it all makes sense. So that is definitely um, something that happens here. So that is a, a change, that's an event that as Saturn passes through, you're changing your life in that way. The money changes too. You go from, and there's dependence. Uh, I know when, um, I know lots of people who've gone through this and they've had to become dependent on their husband or wife at this time or their parents for, you know, to, to, to keep them going while they start up their new business or whatever it is that they're doing. So, and of course, I mean, if you can't rely on family or parents or whatever, you could go to a dragon, right? You could go to a venture capitalist, seed capitalist. Let's take a look at another part of this diagram that, you know, got me thinking and um, how things work. So taxes, I know there's that phrase, death and taxes. So you could think that death and taxes, or you could think that taxes were, is that an eighth house thing, other people's money? I thought about this and I thought, no. And here's one of the things I forgot to mention at the very start of this video, which I probably should have said. Please don't take this as gospel. This is just an experimental diagram. This is me brainstorming out loud and I'm just sharing it with you in case it sparks your astrological mind to think up things for yourself. Okay, so that's all I'm doing here. This is not gospel. This is just me brainstorming, jotting down uh, ideas. So challenge me as well. You're very welcome in the comments below to challenge me and say, do you know what? I think taxes belong in this house or I think taxes belong there or no, you've got it wrong. It's like this. Whatever it is, you're very welcome uh, to, to express your thoughts and, and say what you think it is. I put taxes here in the fifth house. And why did I do that? This was a tricky one because you could say that it's an other people's money type thing. But I actually think that it's linked in with the kingdom, with the running of the kingdom. And one of the things that was very easy for me to jot down when I started thinking about what is a brand, a brand is, you know, you have a logo, you stick your logo on something and then you can sell that thing and, and you make money. You have a brand that has value that makes money. Whether you're awake or asleep, a brand is, you know, is growing and, and ticking over and accumulating wealth and, and bringing in money. So I thought that's kind of like the sun. And to me, brands and taxes, that's a kind of similar sort of thing. Brands, taxes, royalties. To me, this, this is all a very similar thing and it's all the sun. It's all the sun that's permanently on, whether you're awake or asleep or doing something or not, it's earning money, it's bringing money in. So this is a fifth house fire type of situation. Uh, what about ninth house fire? What do I see there? Oh, actually, before I go to the ninth house fire, I also want to talk about the share market because I do mention speculative money here in the fifth house and I mention the share market. So the share market, I have in the 11th house, I've listed IPOs, initial public offerings. Now that is when members of the public get to put their money in and it, it raises the the value of the, of the company tremendously so that is Saturn and that's that involves lots and lots of people so that's why I've got an IPO there but it's really this entire 511 line is the share market the whole line because you got the kings and queens who own the company uh, or the shareholders that own the company and then you've got the everyday people a lot of people who who come in and, and make the whole thing really huge so that line is definitely the share market. So I wanted to contrast fifth house fire with ninth house fire, what's going on there. So the fifth house fire, I believe, is where the kingdom brings the money in. And the ninth house fire, that's where you spend it. Because government officials are always rewarded for 
you know, the more people they have underneath them and the more they spend kind of thing, the more they are rewarded. I, I, I don't get that. I, that doesn't, I, I don't know how that works, but I know Robert Kiyosaki in the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he talks about this. He talks about the fact that government people are almost rewarded for being inefficient or having a lot of people under them or, or that kind of thing. Again, don't shoot the messenger. I don't know how this stuff works, but what I've written and put under ninth house money is you know things like budgets uh, let's say you're a marketing director and you have a large budget that you get to spend on advertising and activities and whatever else um, government budgets right scholarships grants research grants this is where you know the big money of the kingdom gets spent so the, the money of the kingdom comes into the fifth and it gets spent in the ninth that was one of the things that I thought. Again, none of this is gospel. You can challenge me, you can say, no, it's like this or it's like that. This is just my thinking for now. And I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, let's, have, let's jump into the 10th house and see if there are any examples here. Well, I thought I would look at Martha Stewart. How are we doing on time? Wow, this is a long video. Okay, I didn't want it to be very long. I wanted it to be quick, but oh well. Um, tenth house, let's take a look here. So I don't have too many things listed under the 10th house. Let me open my diagram here. I've got B2B movements of money and corporate buyouts. I'm not very familiar with uh, all the many financial tools and instruments that must be in that corporate domain. I kind of don't know. Some of you out there would be great at filling in, you know, I've only got two things there. So if anyone wants to add more, please do. But I thought I'd look at something like Martha Stewart um, floating her company MSLO on the New York Stock Exchange. Now that happened 19th October 1999. So if we take a look at the chart, what's active here is really quite interesting. We've got Rahu in the 10th from her ascendant. Perfect, right? This is definitely a corporate thing. Her company was, was becoming a big corporate entity. And from the moon, we've got that share market line beautifully lit with the heavy players. We've got Jupiter, Saturn there, both in retrograde, extremely powerful. And we've got the Sun and Mercury there as well, fantastic. So we've, we've clearly got um, some great energy there. And of course the Lord of that uh, house is up there with the moon. This is all fantastic, right? Really, really good via transit. So we can see, you know, how, how money moves and um, how it works with the chart. I will just very quickly give you another example, which is Sharon Osborne. Now this, I just heard about this, um, I think it was yesterday or today, I can't remember, I think it was yesterday. I read some headline briefly that Sharon Osborne got $13 million because she's leaving her, her job in the TV show called The Talk. I'm not even that familiar. I think I wrote it down recently. Sharon Osborne received 13 million payout after controversial exit from The Talk. Okay, so what is this movement of money? Now, I, I'm not gonna look at her chart. I just wanna understand what is this movement of money? 13 million, where would I categorize that in this big diagram? How would I look at that through this diagram? So for me, I thought, is it sixth house? Because if you're fired, it could be a sixth house payment, but she wasn't really fired, I don't think. I think she was asked to leave or something. Or maybe her job was made redundant. And then I started thinking, oh yeah, redundancy payments. I didn't include that. So after this example, I realized, well, redundancy would surely be a 12th house matter because of the loss of a job. So yeah, that could be, could be a 12th house matter. But then in the article that I read, they used the word payout. And that kind of got me thinking that maybe this is a 10th house activity, like a buyout, like a corporate buyout. And I was trying to figure this out because, yeah, they have said to her that she's allowed to talk about this. So it's not like she can't talk about it. It's a weird sort of settlement thing. I don't know what this is, I'm, but I'm gonna call it a buyout. And it's like the creation of another PR entity because they've said that she can talk about this 
after she goes. So it's kind of going to keep the controversy going or keep the ratings high or what, I, I'm not sure. Maybe she'll be hired again, I have no idea. But to me it felt like something a little bit more creative and I thought it's more of a tenth house activity. Well, I'm gonna wrap this video up because it's gone on far longer than I wanted it to. It's 20 minutes now. But um, this is just something for you to think about and uh, I'm gonna link to the article, uh, to the diagram in an article below so that you'll be able to see it in full and you can add to it what you think and you can challenge what I've said. You can say, you know what, I disagree with that. I think that financial thing should be in a different house and you can tell me where you think it should be. But I hope this has been interesting for you guys, something a little bit different, me sharing some experimental scribbles and stay tuned on the channel, there's a lot more to come. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.